actually started yet sorry guys uh so good evening peeps um we this is a build root mouse forgotten the issue uh, 78. 78 yeah so <laughs> this is 78 nice big um big uh, packaging today uh, i'm penny and this is my co-host horlix good evening everyone how is everyone today i so, know I'm, i was sorry. talking to penny yesterday and um she asked me she goes what issue are we on this week and i said 80 i think <laughs> and how wrong i was by two i, I thought of that this morning i was setting the show up i'm like 80 what that i think it's because we were talking about 79 and yeah potential problem and i think that's why i had 79 is it, is it 79 that we had problems because i'm hearing about problems with this week's piece it might have been this week i don't know um, what's going on anymore <laughs> now it turns out i went and got my copy yesterday of issue 68 hang on hang on of 77 sorry of the schoolboy now we looked at my subscription copy and that was absolutely fine. Um, I didn't actually pick up my news agent's copy till yesterday and I got it home and I saw a little white mark on the arm. Turns out his arm has snapped off. Um, so I've taken it back today and they've, they're going to do a back order, but I'm not moaning too much because it's not like we need that part to continue with next week. Um, and let's be fair. I've had, one issue a day late, two issues a day early, a problem with the cab on the subscription copies, and a problem with my newsagent's copies. That really isn't a bad track record, is it? <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm really not complaining. Right. So I'm going to quickly whiz through the comments. We have got Mark Knight, Love Minis. Love Minis, Mark Knight. Love them. Having a little conversation between themselves. Uh, we've got Adrian, co-editor. Um, is that your YouTube name then, Adrian? Co uh, you got another channel, Adrian, co-editor. Um, so we've got more. Michael John Wicks. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is well. Um, we've got Mark, like, Mark, like, Michael John Wicks. How are you? Uh, I'm well, part, apart from having slight problems with my eyes. I think we're all breaking down between us, aren't we? Um, Chris Davies, um, no, Chris Davies did a show last night. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, um, but I will catch up. Steve Graham says hello, everyone. Um, and we've got Roger Kendall. Hello, Roger Kendall. Uh, Michael John Wicks, Chris Davies. I'm just trying to call out as many different names as I can. I'm also skimming the comments because, as you know, all. The early comments tend to be like chatting amongst selves. And uh, so Chris Davis is getting a stand for his mic and Matt Friday. Uh, Dave Milne, hello. Not uh, John, 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 Adrian, co editor. The Wayne, hello. Mark Knight, Steve Heisen. P4TF20, hi. Hope everyone had a great week. Um, Mike Fleetwood J, hello. Steve Heisen, The Wayne, Mark. Night, Chris Campbell, how are you? Um, Steve Hyson, Ian Martin, hello. Good evening, Penny and Horlix. Uh, Lily says hello, hello, hello. Lily might be a policewoman. Oh, you've gone, you've gone mute. Oh, there you That's go. right. Sorry. Yeah. So Lily might be arresting us if we do anything bad tonight. <laughs> um, and that is caught up, I believe. Shall we go straight into the build? Um, chats, how's the dog? How's you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Dog's okay. Um, areas are sticking up now. <laughs> um, yeah. I've just been busy with various things, and that's about it. No, I was hovering over the mute button because I'm actually I've got another print sent into the printer. Right. And you know what my print is like. It's quite quiet, but when the bed's going up, it makes a yes. racket. Yes, it does make. I'm um, sometimes I'm chatting to you, and all I can do is just pause. So I'm, I'm, I'm hovering I'm, over mute just while the bed yeah. goes up. I'm watching the temperature. Yeah, I'm sitting there. I'm thinking I'm not fighting with the printer because I will lose. <laughs> it doesn't sound too bad, but I think the mic picks it up so well. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so we've been mostly printing and discussing stuff, haven't we, for Saturdays? Yes. Um, so um, what we're what, what we're trying to do is get as much of the project built, uh, not built, but worked out. Sometimes some of these prints they don't have instructions, so we've got to figure it all out. Um, we don't know what colours to print them. Um, so, like for example. This is my box of miscellaneous, and you see there's some grey prints. I've got absolutely tons of grey stuff, so I'm printing grey bits off in a very, very, very rough. Um, it's almost awful, but you get to sort of see what the prints look like, and then we can go, oh, yeah, that bit wants to be that, and that one wants to be that. Um, Levi Otter has just popped in and said hello. Um so, yeah, and then what's helping is, um, as of today, we're now the proud owner of some of the electronics, but not all of it. So um, things make more sense when you um, have things in front of you. So um, shall we have a look at the build? Yes. As this is a Build the Root Master show. So that is the front cover of issue 78. And I've not had a really good look, um, but it's from what I can see, it's actually quite vague. So, <laughs> um, but this is the last. If you're a subscriber, this should be the last issue of the four that you get. And I can only see three pieces. So, ah, hmm, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to build the suspension now. Then. <laughs> okay, so uh, second section of the ceiling framework in this issue fit a second section of framework to the underside of the floor of the upper deck. The ceiling of the lower deck will be fitted to this framework later. Right, okay, so I'll flip between large and small like we did last week, and I've lost my nut areas. Right, so. So, hang on i ain't caught up with you i'm in a muddle i've had a terrible day at work today as well right so what there's the print now hang on All right Oh, uh, do you know, guys, I'm having problems with my mic. It just keeps muting itself. Um, I'm going to see how it goes, but if it keeps doing it, I'm going to change my mic to my web. In fact, I'm going to anyway. Um, so, mic. Um, for some there we go. So, I should now be on the uh, uh, webcam mic. It seems to sort of hold okay. So I don't know what the problem is. It says losing connections or something. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Knight has said, um, no penny that. Mm, ah, oh, just got the innuendos going early. Hmm. And Mark Knight is saying, yay, the framework at last. Oh, did I miss Matt the, Matt the tart? Mark the tart. Sorry, I do apologize. I hate missing people. So, right, so, um, right, we may have a guest later on. Just had a, a, a notification. So, do you want me to go through the parts if your printer is going a bit mad? Yeah, no, it's all right. I can, I can go through. So, 78A, second section of the ceiling framework. Right, so observation I've made, it looks okay. It might be bent. We don't know until we actually fit it. And it's a big curve, but I think that's meant to be like that. It feels quite rough. It doesn't feel the quality that I remember from the first piece. However, this is going to bolt onto the bottom and we'll never see it again. So I'm not overly worried, but it just doesn't feel quite the quality that I remember. 
So if they, I don't know if they've changed suppliers and they've reduced the costs and it might reflect on the rest of the parts. And I certainly hope it doesn't. But I'm, uh, I don't know, it looks, it looks symmetrical. But it, I, I'm not sure. Until we fit it, we won't know for sure. So what's next? Okay, so then we should have some uh, 10 FM screws. Right, so 10 FM. Oh, you can't see them because I've got the long screen. So there's 10 FM screws in there, and they are definitely FM screws. And that will leave us with, interestingly enough, I 5 IP screws. Right, so we've got FM screws going into metal, and there is five ip screws there which will go into plastic so obviously we're going to be bolting i'm guessing this to the other piece of framework and then a couple of screws to bolt it to the plastic bottom that makes sense yeah right so while horlix is going through the first stage um and let me get the screws out um i've just got stuff piling up. Sorry, I'm so organ disorganized today. Um, so, what are we after? Uh, IP. It's been so long since we used screws. And FM. FM 102. Uh, Right, so while Horlicks goes through the first set of instructions, I'll get the top half of my bus down, which is starting to get very heavy, I will add. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> step one is position the second section of the lower deck ceiling framework, 78A, on the underside of the floor of the upper deck. Note the notes that there are four tabs on the end of part 78A, each with two holes. These should be aligned with sockets on the previous section of framework 74A. After making sure that the tabs are fully inserted, fix in place with eight FM screws. Um, it says while you're work uh, while you're fixing uh, the seeding framework. Uh, make sure you do not damage the seats that are already fitted to the upper deck. Right, so we've got to kind of pull everything into the right place without knocking anything else out. Let's see how we get on then. So, obviously, we can't, if we're going to tip this upside down, we can't press too hard on it. Right, so I might need to steal the whole screen. I think that's going to work better. And I might actually move the camera up as well. Which means you will see more of my messy desk. <laughs> I do apologise. I'll try and move the ashtray out of view. So, this is a little bit worrying. I don't like that. So, I might just work on it on its side. I think that will be more sensible. Right, so let's have a look at this so we've got these two outside tabs are level with each other these two are actually lowered down and if you can see it there we go now the outside ones have got a little downward tab or locating peg right two three four five six seven eight right got it so that's going to go straight on like that and that is made to measure really so remind me we are there are four tabs on the end of part 78a so there's the four tabs there yeah and they're almost in place they will probably fall into place once the screws are in i'm sorry that the view is awful like if I if I actually tidied my room, I'd have this further back, right? So what I'm also looking at is so if we got four IP screws, five, sorry, uh, five. It's saying yeah, so it'll be four. So we're using 
So we're going to use four. So what I'm looking at is these tabs here. I know we're not dealing with this. But we've got four holes. One, two, three, four. Then we've got the eight holes there. Now, if I line that up there, I can see that these are roughly lining up with the hole, the plastic hole, the IP screw holes. So I'm confident that that is lined up correctly, but this has got a bit of a kink in it. And I suspect that that's mainly where, you see where this has been sat? It's got, it's developed a bit of a bow, which I thought would happen. That's why I wanted the, this framework on as quickly as possible. It's a little bit disappointing we didn't do one week then the other, but you know, things have come out the way they have. And, and yeah, that's good. So, FM screws. Yeah, that's it. You want so, eight of them. Eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one more. Make sure I've got the right head because there's nothing worse than getting partway through and needing to change the head. So, I'm going to start with one of the top screws which is this one and that's gone in really nice no it's not gone in really nice so i just want it to go in enough just to bite you can feel when it's going to bite because it starts to just uh, give more resistance so then i'm going to go opposite and this one isn't lining up properly so i just want to manipulate this floor a little bit so that it will Right, that is not lined up because the screw is not wanting to go in. So I may just have to pick it up. Obviously, I need to keep this this way round. Right, so that's looking better. It's a little bit awkward to hold because of the size of it. And I know that if I, um, if I hold it the wrong way, I'm going to snap these seats. So I'm trying to kind of hold it. A bit like a dog or a baby but i'm having my arm right round it so once i can get these first few screws in i will then be happier that i think has gone in lovely that's gone in enough to bite so now oh but it's still wobbly that, that's come out so may even have to go all the way with that screw right that's a struggle to get it lined up is anyone else struggling with this or is it just the way i'm holding it perhaps is there anything i miss i mean i've said some people are saying that something wasn't i can't remember what was said was it something not lined up or there wasn't a groove somewhere um Right, I just think that I've just not got it quite lined up. And you know what these screws are like. If you don't get it quite lined. Having said that, I still don't think that's lined up. Because that's not going in the hole. Um, sorry, that's not tightening up. Right, let me pop this screw. I think once we get the outside screws in. That will pull the middle ones in. Ah, that's going in great. That's lovely. So it could just be a problem with the screw hole. Right, so let's try a different screw. It, it's going round and round fine. But it's that's all it's doing is just going round and round. Right. So let's let's ignore that hole altogether. And we'll come back to it, love. So I'm trying to use the floorboard. You know, that's gone in really nice. And then we that leaves us with this one. It's 
See, what's happening is that the floor is trying to spring away because it's not attached to the floor. I wonder actually if it might be worth taking the framework off this side, assembling the framework, then place it back on. Yeah. That's certainly a consideration, isn't it? I'll see how I get on because it, this isn't going to be a large stage and I don't have to be up early in the morning. So we've got plenty of time. Right. right. I think, I mean, to be honest with you, I think putting just four screws in would hold it. So if we can't get that eighth one in, see that one's struggling. Right, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the plastic screws out, and I'm going to deal with this framework on its own. It's going to be risky because these these they may not go back in. Um, but I think that's going to be so much easier. Then I can lay it flat on the table. So let me find a little container. I know I had hundreds. I can't remember these screws. I'm guessing they might be IP screws. But if I just take these out and put them into a pot, then we've got them then, haven't we? Are you guys all happy with that? <clears throat> yeah. And it's uh, P4. Oh, so, yeah, P4, he said, before you tighten... Well, when you get them in before, are oh, you saying before you tighten the FM screws, uh, put the IP screws in as well? Right. Yes. Um, I'm trying to only put the screws in just enough to bite, but because they're quite short screws, that's difficult to judge. And some of them have gone in practically all the way. Um, so five screws I, I'm seeing. So five screws on this side, four on that side, which is actually very good news because it means we can't get the framework the wrong way around. So. Right. So. That's going to be a lot easier. So let me loosen some of these off. It's this one here I'm struggling with. Oh, sorry, guys. It's this one here that I'm struggling with. And this one doesn't seem to want to go in. So let's... I really don't like undoing these screws. But I seem to be able to get six screws in and, and at least one on every post. So, but I, I suspect what a problem may be, because I've been working at, on, it, on its side at an angle, I may not actually have lined it up quite properly. So, Right, so that's all the screws removed. Right. Oh, that's lovely. That's gone straight in. Right, so I'm happy with that. So I'll put this one in next. Straight in. Lovely. I think I just didn't quite have it lined up. And what actually helps, this post there, that's actually one, one half of it is this one and one half is this. So you can actually get both sides and squeeze them together.
Your printer is singing a lovely song. Is it really loud? That's, no, not loud. It's just nice. It sounds quite rhythmic. So yeah. I'm going to take this screw next because that was one we had trouble with. Oh, beautiful. Right. So I'm suspecting the problem I had was just that I didn't have it flat. So if you're blessed with a professional workshop, Oh, no, this one's not. Right. You actually need to press really hard. So if they're not going... Now, obviously, if this was attached to the bottom of the, the floor, to press really hard, you're risking damage. So if you're not up to the stage where we attach this to the floor, don't... Don't attach it. I know you're pretty much going to miss an entire issue, but I would recommend skipping to this stage and assemble them together first. Are you in disagreement with that, Horlick? No, I think that's a really good thing. And it's better to do it that way because you're not risking damaging the seats either. No, see, now I've got a lovely flat surface to work on. So, yeah, you've got a flat surface and you're not going to damage C, so win win all round. Yeah, because when I tip that upside down, can you see that the, the whole piece is going to be resting on these little tiny, tiny bits of plastic? Yeah. Whereas now we've got this framework. Um, I did see a question earlier on is this plastic or metal? This is definitely metal. So I can't remember what screws I've put in, so I'm just going back. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Yeah, I'm really liking doing it this way. So I can't remember the stage that we did this. Was it just five screws? Bang, there it is. And that was end of issue. Right, there we go. So let's see how solid that is. That is very solid, but look at the shape of it. Is that correct? I don't think that is. But it's flat. Can you see the bend in it? No. Can anyone confirm that bend? Let me... Um... Right. There it is. Can you see that bend? Yeah. That looks quite severe to me. Let me pull this out. Uh, Fight and Sweep says that um, his was like that, but it still sits on the bus okay. 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 I'll trust that then. Maybe right. Just go so, with it for now. And yeah. then. So, what I'm doing is I'm lining it back up. Now, we know these five screws line up and they actually slip in and then i'm just checking these screws will line up and i think they will so i'll get my five i uh, i'm assuming these are ips um but for the benefit of the tape i'm going to call them whatever came out of the bottom of the bus yeah <laughs> so i may not be able to tighten these up as tight as they were well, I'm just going to quickly grab a bottle of water. I'll be two seconds. Yeah, no problems. So uh, I'm working in opposite corners. Mark Knight says, go on, Penny. Once it's in, it will all make sense. Right. So I'm worried with these being plastic screws. So I'm just screwing them until the resistance gets but it's actually quite strong resistance i think i'd have to be quite strong to continue turning that um 
but once they're in, if we feel that they need to be a little bit tighter, we can always give them a slight extra turn. So, there we go. So that, that's the original five screws back in. So, uh, right. So before you fully tighten, right. So obviously, like you said, that comment 10 minutes ago, P40, um, I'm actually thinking the way I've just done it in that particular circumstance has worked best for me. So I, I have fully tightened them. But what we're now going to do is obviously move this onto the bus. So I may struggle. Um, right, you still here. I'm just making sure the comments are caught up with. Um, so. Right, Dave Milne says that was my idea. Uh, I've not fit the part yet. Glad I decided to wait. Yeah, so these people who um, they jump in and build it, that's lovely. You you get to see before everyone else what it looks like when it's finished. But the people who are behind, either through choice or not, um, they get to see other people's builds. So they, although they don't get to see it first, um right p40 f20 is still saying loosen the screws when you say a bit do you mean a little bit or a lot of bit um so everyone's saying slacking off the fm screws. so look when more than two or three people say it it's worth listening to so i'm going to give them about a half a turn do you think that'll be enough i don't want them to fall out but i want them to stay in I think I can guess why. Um, yeah, I can see now as well where your hand is. There is a quite a gap between the plastic yeah. and the... Right. So I'm guessing that the reason we want to slacken these off is that if these are tight, this metal bit will be rigid, which means that the only thing available to flex will be those plastic parts. If we flex this, there we go, then we can bring this to the plastic part, then we can set and then it'll gently bring everything back. I'm thinking. Chris has a okay. Uh, yeah, P4 is just a bit to give you some play. Right. So yeah, there we go. So we've got a little bit of play, not a massive amount. But just a little bit so um right so i think we're finally ready for stage two okay so stage I like two. That I know we're not showing off the um the articles but i do like that framework the the picture they show us and they give us you want me to go back no 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 um Okay, two, check the fixing points for the rest of the framework. Uh, note that two of the screws fit into the sockets on part 73A and two fit into sockets on part 70, oh, sorry, 73A and two yeah. fit into sockets on 72A. Fix and place with four IP screws. Again, taking care not to damage the previously fitted seats. The inset shows the framework in place. Right, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, what we've got is where my hands are. Oh, hang on. Right. Where, so I'm going to go full screen. Right. So where my hands are now, that's the dividers for the floor. We've got five screws in here. We've currently got nothing screwed into this part here. So we'll have two screws in this middle part, and then we'll end up with two screws there. So every piece of floor will be bolted down to something. So that should make it more rigid. So shall we begin with the screws? Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to have a little fiddle and a fudge. And I'm going to go for this one first because I can see that one is nicely lined up. So couple of turns of the screw 
that's in just enough to bite. I'm not going to go any further. So then we'll go for this one. So excuse my head. That is nicely lined up, actually. It's just difficult to see. I'd rather work this on the side. There we go. Because if I turn it up, I could end up knocking the seats. The seats are the really important bit. Damage those. And remember, we've got those little sticky up bits. So we've got grab handles to come. Right, so I'm just going to move it along just to make it a bit more comfortable for me. Um, so two more screws and one in this bottom corner. I'm working bottom up because the bottom bits are easier to see. Um, do the easiest screw hole that you've got left. And that screw, oh, I thought it was a bit long, but it's actually not. So I need to just manipulate that a little bit. Um, so I, there we go. So what I've done is I've pushed my hat finger there on the plastic bit and there on the metal, and it just pulls the metal up and the plastic down just a little bit. And that is it's probably a little bit more than just a bite, but that's fine. So that should leave us with one screw hole, which if we've done anything correctly should go in like a breeze which it hasn't so right so i'm just going to pull that up a bit there we go so normally when your screwdriver clicks it's not normally a good thing is it but in this case, it means that the screw has fallen into the into the, there's like a little a little longer bit and you screw it into there. So once you get that click, you know the screw's fallen into place. So I'm going to tighten the IP screws now. Um, and then I'll tighten the FM screws. Oh. Right, that's that one done. You know me, I worry about plastic screws because I've had so many that don't fully tighten they just go round and round all day the screws on the bus go round and round okay and the last ip screw perfect and then we'll re-tighten up the fm screws Probably just should use a slightly smaller head for this. Don't really like changing heads midway through, but you know, just make life a bit easier for me. So I think I've switched from a J1 to a J0. It's a little bit of a deeper screw uh, head. No, that's actually not worse, uh, not better. So I tried, I failed. So yeah, I'm liking the broader screwdriver head. There we go. Lovely. They're going in really solid now. I perhaps could have used a bit of oil. Just going to turn it over. Struggling a bit with those bottom two. So I just turned it over so that the bottom two become the top two. And they're a little bit easier to work with because I'm not, I'm not screwing along the ground then. So those I'm happy with. One last check. Oh, oh, right. So, shall we test it? Yeah, that actually looks like it's straightened out now. You've put the IP screws in, right? Okay, I've got a bit of a kink there. 
So what I'll do is I just want to tighten this screw up. Ah, there we go. That's helped. Yeah, it does now look straight, doesn't it? That's interesting. Got a bit of a kink there, but I think that will be okay. Because you can see this screw holes there. So I think that will pull everything in straight. Yeah. If I push down on it. Um, that's amazing. So maybe that is the shape. I'm in love with the shape of you. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, I was a bit concerned to start with, but actually that's come turned out all right. I was. I was a little bit more reassured when someone else said mine was the same. So we'll do a strength test. I'm not going to put too much pressure on. Oh, look at that. Should I do the ultimate strength test and lift it up by one end? I think it will take it. Look at that. Let me switch cameras. You can see it properly. I experiment so you don't have to. <laughs> right, so. It is heavy. And it's cutting into my hands. This bit there is cutting into sides. But, yeah, I would say that's str strong. Wouldn't you? Yeah, brilliant. So... Yeah, there you go. I'm happy with that. Really, really happy. Uh, it's it's quite heavy now, um, as you would expect. Um, five pound, about five pound bag of potatoes. So what's five pound? A couple of kilos. Maybe if anyone else has done theirs, if they want to, want to lift theirs up and tell me what they think it weighs. Three pound. Three pound. I can imagine they're being quite heavy, yeah. Paul 61 has says, now you can say you've screwed on top of the bus. How do you know I haven't already said that? All right. Oh, dear. About a month, a month before he died, my uncle had his back covered in lard. After that, he went downhill fast. I'll tell you a sad story. My uncle used to um, used to work for Nestle, and uh, he used to work in the packing department. And um, he died when loads and loads of boxes of chocolate fell on him. And um, he tried to call out for help, but every time he went, the milky bars are on me. Everyone just cheered. <laughs> so. Uh, and my favourite joke of the week, I was in the shop the other day, I was trying on some shoes, and I said to the shop assistant, my, uh, my the shoes are a bit tight. <coughs> she said, try it with the tongue sticking out. <coughs> so I went, it's not good, the shoes are still tight. <laughs> my girlfriend told me she was leaving me because I keep pretending to be a transformer. I said, no way, I can change. That's <laughs> Chris. Right, so um yeah, short issue. We knew it'd be a short issue, but we felt it'd be a productive issue. Um, I've wanted that second piece of that strengthener on because I have been worried about you got the plastic bit flat then. So now look at it. From there it's no different, but from there it's nice. So I've got to try and figure, well, I haven't got to try and figure out, but I'd like to see how that's going to go on because I can't seem to get these to line up with anything that makes sense. So um, I think those silver tabs will probably to affix the skin. Um, yes. The little holes on the side of the floor will go into the tabs on the roof, sticking up from the, the inner, inner walls. Tabs? Yeah, down the sides. Oh, these tabs. The little holes along the yeah, sides. I reckon can line up with the tabs, but these don't line up. Yeah, I reckon they're for the outer skin. Right. Okay. So when do we, as a group, 
when do we uh, think we're getting the skin? Do we think the way things are going, do you think we're going to build the top deck, end up with a big bit, put that on, then put the lights on? Oh, surely we're going to fit this to the top deck before we put the lights on. Because we can't fix the lights separately because they're officially connected to the bus. Hmm. And then do you think we'll do all the body panels last? Possibly. Do you think that'd get boring? Might. Well, yeah, they might just send. I would say it would and it wouldn't because it will be. I know I'm pretty sure Dave say will go, no, no, body panels are never boring. Um, I think it could be boring doing the same thing every week. However, each week that we put body panels on, it will get, you'll see it building. I, I often sit there and look and think back to when we, do you remember when we just had a naff few little pieces? Hmm. It's a long time yeah. ago, but we had, we had a just a couple of pieces of naff pieces. And then, and then we're like, well, I want something big. And then we got tiny little pieces. And then all of a sudden we got the chassis. And do you remember we were doing four wheels? That was, oh, that was boring, wasn't it? Mm. But look at it now. So, yeah. So Dave Say is saying body panels last, which does make sense. Right. Shall we have a look at next week then? Yep. Okay, so handrails are supplied together with the front and rear walls of the upper deck front and rear walls so we're going to get two walls then so once again they kept the picture slightly vague because we haven't, they haven't shown us the rear walls but we've got the front windscreen bit the upper the uh, the front upper deck windscreen wall right so what i'm suggesting then is that rear wall that's going to be interesting Right, so front and rear wall suggests to me that next week the bus is going to look like that's that's ridiculous because that's in the bloody way. Right, so I'm suggesting that next week the bus will look like that, where my hands represent the walls. Yeah. So let's play a little game. What's coming in subsequent issues? Is it a side walls over six weeks, three weeks? Will it be B, the screws to connect it to the top deck? Or will it be C, the driver's cab? Answers on the postcard. <laughs> what do you think, Horlix? Um Your speculations are usually not a million miles out. I I reckon we might start getting the upper deck sidewalls after that. Right. And then once they're in place, I think we'd then do the roof, the top deck roof, and then I reckon we'll fit the that to the framework. And then I reckon we'll put the LEDs in. Then we'll begin to start fitting that to the lower. Right. That's my so, forecast. What I'm worried about is before we had the roof on, on the lower deck, we had panels flapping on the side. Yeah. We have to put this onto the top, onto the bottom deck before we put the roof on, but after we put the walls... Are we going to get a lot of people breaking the walls? Because then they're quite fragile when they're only connected to one line. Okay, well, I suppose that, yeah, in the middle, they might chuck in fitting the bottom roof, the lower deck roof, in between building the walls for the top deck, just to, just to mix it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's anyone's guess, isn't it? It's you know. Yeah. Um. Like we've had. 
Right. We've had a lot of people saying about um, their electronics aren't working. Right. I'm going to make a suggestion. I don't know when we'll fit this in. We know we can host the show with up to six people. Do you want to try and do a clinic of some kind where people can come on to the show? Um, obviously, they'll need a webcam and um, a microphone. We know that with this software, you don't need all you need is just your webcam and your and your mic. No special software. Shall we? Right on the Facebook group. I'm finding it very difficult to suggest answers based purely on text. Uh, it's just I can't always visualize what they're on about. Um, so if we can get some people on the show and say, look, this is the problems I've got, then they can show us their bill. They can show us what the problem is. Do you think that would be a doer? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So... Anyway, so going back, we've got uh, Chris. You asked me about the R2. The R2 is going to be starting again soon. Um, I'm wondering. I think what I'm. I, I, I had an idea. Um, I'll do. I, I always want the R2 to be a weekly thing. Um, the ship. I think what I might do with that. I might change that to monthly, and just do sometimes you can only really do five minutes on it sometimes you won't need to spend an hour or so and i think i might film myself doing it over the course of a month place the whole video you know all the clips together into one big video and then do voiceover i think that's going to be the easiest way um i didn't you, you when you start a project you you do as much research as you can and you think you're going in with your eyes open and then once you get into it, you realise there's, there's things you're struggling with. Um, this is the problem we're having with the Ori, isn't it? Um, yeah. where little things we didn't quite... We thought we'd have the whole lot done in um, in six episodes. Yeah. Um, we are now looking at... Um, About... Yeah. Yeah. And we... And we know what we're like. We might even need an eleventh week. So what we're having to do is we're now focusing more on arranging backup plans than we are actually on plan A. If that. Oh, I need to make an apology. We've had new uniform given us to us, which we start wearing next this week. That means I'm wearing my logo on my. I will always try and change before work. If I'm ever wearing a logoed shirt, um, I cannot discuss my work. Um, my manager is very sensitive about things that go on social media. So obviously I've been bad and I've not covered up. Um, so I will not discuss work when I'm wearing work clothes because if any comments, you guys are fine. Um, you take everything as I intend it. Um, but, so, you know, I get four, five, six hundred views on this uh, um, each stream. Sometimes there might be haters or whatever, and things can be taken the wrong way. So, um, right. So, yeah, I, I should put, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll do what I should have done. I know it looks stupid. Well, that was effective, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. I've got a great idea. Oh, I've, um, I need to get some, some cards made up. I'm, um, yeah. 
That work? <laughs> what is this site? Hello, my name is Penny. Oh. <laughs> um, right, so we'll start discussing on the Facebook group. The link to the Facebook group is, is down below in the description. So if anybody is having problems, um, obviously if anybody can help in the Facebook group, then brilliant that is what the whole facebook group exists for um if anyone really is struggling let's get them on the show and then uh, i can talk about my work now yes so i'm now back to being a, a bus driver in south wales um yeah so we can get them on the show we can have a look at the build and if you're on the show right now this second you've got 46 people helping you which is, by the way, is a terrific number. The numbers just seem to go up. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Really, really happy with that. Obviously, once the build ends, we tend to lose a couple of numbers. Some people really don't have the time to do a two-hour show, and that's fine. I think there's some people who will watch the live build, then maybe go to bed or, or whatever, and then they'll watch it um, another time, which is fine. I mean, I still not watched uh, Chris Davies' stream from yesterday. Doesn't mean I'm not going to. Um, so Stuart Sullivan is struggling. Um, so obviously, the most um, the most obvious thing to check is your connections. Um, Stuart, have you can check your connections before you connected them? Um, I'm just going to pop this on the bus. You know what I'm like about having parts flying around. Um, so yeah, if you've um, if you checked, because obviously if you plug something into a connector, a circuit board, and it doesn't work, it's one of two things: is either the circuit board or it's the part that you've plugged into it. If you now, I didn't check my circuit board because there are ways to do it. It was a little bit awkward, and I'm not really super advanced with tech with electrics. Um, so I made sure I tested all my parts and then I thought if it doesn't work, it must be the circuit board, isn't it? Yeah, or I suppose you could check the bat. Can you test the battery box for voltage going into? Yeah. In coming out of the box, just in case that there's a problem with your battery box. That's a good point. Um, right, so. Adrian's just, I'm going to stop because Adrian's just sent me a photo. Normally when Adrian sends me a photo midstream, it's normally an important picture. Right. So Adrian's shown me not a picture of a soggy bottom, but a so soggy back, saggy back. Where the back of the, the, like basically you've got the framework, the metal framework, Obviously, you've got the floor on, but at the back, it hangs over. Um, and it's looking... I'm going to try and be a little bit flashy. Right, there we go. Right. So this is the picture. Did you? Sorry, I'll just ask. Do you mind me sharing this, Adrian? So I don't want to end up embarrassing you accidentally or anything. Okay. Um, so I'll just wait for a response. And I'll just, I, I already know what he's going to say, but I just feel it's a little bit courtesy to ask. Um, so, and Dave, you said that you, you're back. Do you, have you got the link for the show? Do you want to come on the show? We tried to get uh, Dave say on last week and, um, obviously it's still we were still testing the software and, and, and he wasn't able to get on um so yeah basically what we've got is we've got the back of the bus is a little bit soggy saggy sorry and i think that that's it looks to me like it's the oh, have you got it as well have you i've got brought it up and i've got something else yeah, so I, I brought it up on mine but um it just no it's not it's not saggy i take all of that back it's not saggy it's actually the angle of the back seat i think i've seen the problem as well there's something on something on it 
I'm, I'm going to... Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm going to stick to my guns. Right. Um, so... Um, yeah, right, Chris, you're saying that you and Chris Davies didn't have any problems with StreamYard. Um, there's all kinds of things that can cause problems. There can be the user's experience level. There can be the user's hardware. There could be connection. It could be equipment. Um, it could just be a flash of lightning five miles down the road. Um, so from what i saw the stream it was a good stream and i i wonder do you think the stream yard is coming out better quality than google hangouts i do personally do you, um, do you think it's a case of rest in peace google hangout or google hangouts is dead we really don't give a toss hmm. so um okay so dave's still having a problem with logging on so what we've got to figure out dave say is how you can't log on to mine but you can set your own stream up so we'll we'll figure that one out um we're also looking at some other streaming options not not necessarily Streamyard, but um we're looking at, at ways to bring a larger audience bring the bill to more people um right uh, I haven't really looked at your Jag yet, Chris. Um, I will be in a couple of months. I should, because obviously I've got a Jag coming to your house. So I will get to see it. And I'm looking forward to it, actually. Um, right, Adrian has said he doesn't mind. So we will share that. So this is a picture that, that Adrian has sent us. Um, so do you want to, you, you said you've seen the problem. There. I suspect that pin should sit in that groove. Right. Do you that think, doesn't look right. Do you think that that could just be pulled along? Because sometimes what I find is that as you screw parts in, it kind of pulls it into shape. Yeah. And uh, on, on my part today, I did have to pull some bits fairly hard um, because these screws being so small, they've only got to be like a quarter of a mil out and you, they're just going to be impossible. You've got to get that lined up really well. So uh, I am... Um going to do something what am i going to do right i'm going to take half a set oh one set blah, 30 second break i'll be back in the tip i need to get something um yeah it's anything i can see unless it's just the way it's been placed but I thought I read something about some groove not being lined up. So I don't know if that, that's just affecting some people or no one or, yeah, it's just really interesting. Yeah, the problem I've got, well, it's not a problem, is um, <laughs> I've had quite a few things where I thought that's not going to line up. Once the actual fitment came along, then it was like oh yeah that fits really well um we don't know how it's going to go in so all we can really be do is if you feel that it's not going to fit keep an eye on it and then once it comes up um because it's a bit of a bugger if you kind of um if you build something and like you're, you're like, oh, I don't think that's going to work. That's not going to work. And then when you find out it definitely isn't going to work, you've got to uh, unbuild half most of the build just to get to it. Okay, Adrian's just sent another picture through. Right. Is that a pin going in? Is that so? That one. The way I'm seeing this is that one is lined up. Right. That 
one's not. Is that, am I on the right line, Adrian? All pennies vanished. My apologies, guys. I just got uh, Google Chrome going. Something went wrong. Oh. But this is the great thing about StreamYard is that the stream is continuing without me. Yeah. No, it's good. I love it. I just love this. Oh. Got your printer on the go. I love it. I just love this. There you go. Just uh, finished. That's all. Right. Okay. So saying Horlix, both pin is located. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So ideally, we want that. We want to know if that's definitely going to fit or not before we go. Oh, sorry. Right, Michael John Wicks has noticed that my um, my sound keeps flitting. Right, when I'm using my normal mic, it seems to just disconnect the mic, and it seems to be the software, not the actual mic um so i've to save getting frustrated i've changed my sound to the um there we go to the webcam so the mic let me just bring up yeah so instead of the mic being there i'm actually using the mic there now this isn't this isn't primarily a mic so it's not going to be as good as that one um so i don't understand what the problem is I don't know if my computer is quite low spec or not not high enough spec, but I don't really know. We just we'll just muddle along with it, and that's all we can do. So um, right, so yeah, so we've got. It looks like Adrian's got a potential problem with then, and we need to get. We need to know if that definitely will or will not fit as soon as possible, because if we end up building around it, it's going to be too late then. So, hmm. What what I'll do next week? I'm doing a lot of tidying next week. Um, if not not next week, the week after. Oh, hang on, the week after I'll be not streaming. These four weeks comes around really quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Obviously, right. So next week we're doing the front and back wall the week after we're doing something else the week after that i won't be streaming but hopefully the four horsemen of the apocalypse will um can i call you that yeah i think that's quite a good name actually <laughs> <laughs> um so the week after at worst the week after that because i'll have four days off so i can do a lot of cleaning up um so I'll get this desk rearranged um, because I have noticed it's becoming a problem. Um, even if I clear the space, I'm not even sure that's going to be enough. I need to, to look at different camera angles. So I think I now want a third camera, not on the 3D printer, but um, I've got a hole I drilled into this desk. Um, when I was doing painting, I actually had, um, let me see if I can move this back. Just here, I had a camera sticking up there. So what was happening was I could have the camera like this right in front of me. So you can see there I'm, I'm working on whatever. And I think I'm going to need some kind of some kind of spy cam so that you guys can see what I see rather than seeing the angle that i've got the cameras and you know if i can if i can work something out like that then if i'm if i'm going down and looking in the circuit board or whatever 
you're seeing it as well. So um, that's what I'm looking at doing. Because when you're up to issue 10, you don't really fully comp comprehend exactly how big this model is going to be. Um, I still can't comprehend how tall it's going to be. Um, I've done measurements, but um, it's, you know, I know that this shelf up here, um, I've, I've set that shelf up that if I take the support out that the bus is on and place the bus on, that's the height I need for the bus. So yeah. I, I've got to get that shelf cleared out before I get the top deck on, which is going to be quite soon. Um, but even seeing that size there, we're still not really sort of feeling the weight at uh, the height, are we? So, sorry, I've just knocked my little stand off. I call it a tray. It's actually a little wooden, it's a little drawer from a little, little tiny uh, set of wooden drawers. So, Neil Newman is only on issue 70. Do I have to wait till 75 to know if all my lights work? Um, no, you can, you can test. Yeah. Um, we can test wires. We can test LEDs. We can test. I tested the speaker in so much as I put a current through it and it clicked. So I knew that it would work. Can you come here? Oh, oh. Mum about the HIV. Oh. Um, right, so you all, yeah, Chris Campling said they send an extension wire C, so yeah, you'll get that later on. Um, all of my electronics work, Stuart. Um, sorry, <laughs> I've just read Love Minnie's joke. What does a traffic warden do when he wins a million dollars in the lottery? He buys himself a crossing and becomes self-employed. Um, ah, right, yeah, Mark, it's creaked when I leant back. That's my seat. Um, when my, um, I had a big lovely chair and it broke and I needed a chair like today. So um, I bought a nice cheap one and that's what this is. It's not, it's not very glamorous, um, but it does the job. So it's just, it's just, it's kind of a sort of chair that you would give your your apprentice employees, and then you say to them, um, when when you work really hard, you might actually get some foam in your next chair. So um, not a patch on Horlicks's chair. You're right, Horlicks. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah. Um, I've got my eye on a couple of nice chairs. I do miss my director's chair, but... Mine wasn't that expensive, because mine broke. Um, well, and I was fed up with cheap... Uh, I was fed up with, like, the really cheap ones. But this one was... Um, I think it was, like, 25 quid. Really? Something how, like that. Is that vinyl? How, yeah. how do you get on with that? Because I found... Um, if I sat in the chair for too long, obviously where it's not breathing, I get really sweaty on the back of the legs and like I'll be wearing a pair of jeans and they'll end up soaking wet. Oh so well I'm putting the towel down on, on the chair. I can't say I've ever had a problem. I haven't, I haven't really noticed really. But unfortunately, uh when I've got a chair. A really good chair isn't a high priority when there's other stuff I need to buy. Yeah, that's it. That's why I got this one. I think it was about 25, 30 quid. And I didn't yeah. expect much. I thought, oh, even if it lasts like a couple of months. Um, but it's yeah. been it's um it's fine. You've had that more than a couple of months, haven't you? Yeah, I've had it. Well, to be honest, I had it about five months and then it broke. The the right. bottom. The, the bottom seat just snapped in half and i was like oh so then i messaged the seller and said look this is what's happened and he said oh no worries i'll send you another one and i had it the next day really this, you've this had two months yeah and this one's been fine 
Oh. You accept it to me, surely it would last, you know, at least a year. Even though you bought it thinking if I just get a couple of months out of it. Yeah, well, no. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but no, it was bad. It just collapsed. And I, I thought, oh, so I got a new one. And it, no quibbles. They just said, oh, sorry, I'll send you another one. Fair enough. Uh, so, Cheryl says she's done the lottery last week. Not one number came up. Well, talking of lottery, I do a works bonus ball lottery every week. And... All it is, is we young, we're only looking at the bonus ball. You pay a pound, and <coughs> if your bonus ball comes up, then you collect whatever's been collected. If someone hasn't paid or numbers 51 to 49 comes up, it becomes a rollover. And, you know, we've had people win 15, 20 quid. We've had people win 176. And I won it on Sunday, uh, this week. My number came up, number 49, and that was really handy because it meant that um, I could buy an extra shelf this week, and I'm not totally maxed out on my overdraft. So, um, yeah, I've got these three shelves coming next week. So on next week's show, hopefully you should see a change in the background, which I am really excited about. Um, I made... I made a timetable with you, didn't I, Horlix? Yeah. So my timetable for tomorrow <laughs> is wake up at 4 a.m. Um, I've been having trouble with my sleep pattern because we're doing different shifts. I'm up all over the place. So I've decided I'm going to be up at 4 o'clock every morning. If I'm 5 a.m. spare, it just means that I've got an hour to get ready and get to work. If I'm 6.30 spare, I've got two and a half hours. If I'm on late, then I'll do stuff in the morning and then I'll go back to bed about 11 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock and just get a bit of top up sleep. And I can always turn the alarm off and then go back to bed. So four o'clock, I'm going to start clearing the space in my room, which is essentially just going to be lifting the bed up so we can get the press of drawers out, clearing the hallway. And then just before seven, um, now I've had trouble with um, Parcel Force, uh, which is the courier company that, that Screwfix use for these shelves, um, to the point that what I've done this time is I've ordered the shelves on collection, um, and I'm going to get a taxi down to Screwfix. Um, because la the last shelves I ordered, I ended up going down to the Parcel, of of parcel Force office to get them. And, and I'm like, but I ordered them from next door. Screw fix are on the same estate as Parcel Force. Why am I in the Parcel Force office when I could have actually been in Screw Fix the day before and collect them? So yeah. I'm actually paying £10 to get a taxi down there. Joshua, how are you? Joshua Spurrier. Do I know? That's not Joshua. It's Jill. Do you know, my, my resolution on my printer, on my screen is awful. Uh, that is Joshua Spurrier. Do I know you? The name rings a bell, but I can't think. I only know one Joshua in real life. Um, we will find out. But hello to you. Welcome to the show. Always happy to have you on. Um so, so this is going to be a good joke. This comes from Mark. Irishman wins 10 million on the lottery. He phones the claim. They say to him, well, we're having trouble paying right now. So it'll have to be 3 million over the next two weeks. Okay. Oh, followed by 2 million on the last week. The Irishman says, oh, I'm not being messed around. Give me my pound back. Yeah, that, um, <laughs> I don't know if this is a true story or not, but. There was a, a story, I, it's not really a joke, but it's it's quite clever. There was a guy who wants to raise some money. Um, <laughs> I'll read that joke out, Peter, Peter Whitlock in a bit. Um, yeah, so he wanted to raise some money, so he, he raffled off a donkey. But after the raffle started, the donkey died. This is all what you can do. He says, well, I'm still going to sell raffle tickets. So he sold like, I don't know, 500 raffle tickets. Picked the winner. 
and then gave this dead donkey to the uh, to the winner, and then the winner went well, but it's dead. He said, "Well, right, then here's your pound back then," and obviously he was able to keep all the losers' money. Um, so I met Bruce Lee's vegetarian brother today. His name is Broccoli, and uh, Pete Whitlock says there's a new sex position called Parcel Force. You're in all day, but no one comes. <laughs> yeah, I think that could also be called Postman Cancer. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah. Mark Knight copies and paste jokes, LOL. Probably, but they're still funny, aren't they? Uh, Chris, you want to... Right, yeah. Uh, Chris, let me send you the link to the show. So we're going to get uh, our first... First, um, dear, dear Auntie Penny and, and Uncle Horlicks. Do I get that the right way around? So we we'll, shall be greeted by Chris Davies shortly. Right, link on its way. Right, so um, I think we've steered this conversation 400 directions, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Um So, bloke wins 10 million on the lottery. So, people say, So, where it, what, oh, I've lost that. Uh, right, okay. So, bloke wins 10 million. So, people say, So, what are you going to do about the begging letters? He says, Well, I'm still going to write them. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm -hmm. You're right, Josh. I don't think you know me. I'm a new face here. My granddad watches you every week. Oh, bless. Really. We'll say thank you to your granddad. Um, I just, um, when your name popped up, it just, it looked like one of those names that I should remember or that I should know. Um, I've got a couple of people at work that um, have also said that they're going to come on the show, they're going to watch the show and say hello. And, and I don't know if they have been watching, but they certainly don't seem to have said hello. Um, right. So one more joke and then we'll bring Chris Davies on. Uh, what's white stands in front of the stairs and can't go up? A washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Chris Davies is on the show. Hello. How are you? How are you, Penn? I'm good. I'm good. So, right, you're saying about a problem with your build. Yeah, what well, is right? You know, when it comes to the wheels. Yeah. I'm just wanting to know what people think, what I should do. Should I do um, the issue after the wheels? And then do the wheels as pre-recorded. Are we talking about the bus or are we talking about the Jaguar? Oh, my build, yeah. My um, Jaguar. Right. If you're doing live shows, this is only my opinion, but if you're yeah. doing live shows, I would like to see you do the wheels live. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see any problems you have with the wheels. If you find you can't fit them all into one show because they're taken so long, yeah. That's that's how it is, and then that way, if I mean, obviously, I am buying the Jag, but someone might come along in three or four months' time and go, "Yeah, I'm thinking about buying the Jag." Oh, I, I, I'm not sure. I'll have a look at Chris Davies' videos. Right, well, he's having problems there. Um, that bit's nice and easy. Or oh, that one took him three weeks to complete. That that's what I personally would like to see on the video. So. If you're doing pre-recorded, do them all pre-recorded. If you're doing yeah, live, yeah. do them all live. Yeah. I'd like to see your – and also, if you open open the package for the first time yeah. and then your face drops and then you go, hmm, yes, these parts look very good, yeah, yeah, I can see your initial reaction. We're saying they're good, but I. it's like, you know, when when your, uh, your granny buys you socks for Christmas mm -hmm. and you're like – Thank you very much for the socks. I really appreciate them. Oh, you know, if I come to the wheels, then another option I could do, you know, when you come down. If you like. Um, I would do a live show with me and you doing it then. From the, from the rumors that I hear of the bills, they are going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah. Um, but horses for courses. Um, I may come along and, and I go, well, these are easy. Blah, 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 blah. And then I come to what a part that someone else thinks is really simple. 
and I really struggle with that. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, oh, oh, I'm going to be honest, Peter. I like that joke. I found it funny. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bring it up on the screen. I'm sure you understand why. Um, so, Mark and I, you'd think it would have come with a territory for me, wouldn't you? Um, so, how are you, Gordy? Always lovely to see Gordy on the build. Yes, on the um, So, yeah. Um, yeah, good. I, I thought you'd understand. It is a funny joke. I'm, I'm laughing. Um, but obviously, like, I'm thinking about people that might watch the show later on. Um, the problem with YouTube is we may be broadcasting after nine o'clock, but that doesn't mean it'll be watched after nine o'clock, if you get what I mean. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, I'll have a look at your any build if you, you, you know, you struggle. I may struggle to help you if you're ahead of me, because yeah. sometimes I feel you've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, rather than going in and having a look at stage nine, because you don't know how you've got to that stage. I mean, um, I would suggest, Chris, like obviously, the yeah, I've heard the I've heard from other people that the wheels are going to be really hard. <clears throat> you you're obviously inevitably going to have four wheels. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you try one? Yeah. See how you get along, and people will understand. If you are really struggling, just say, unfortunately, I'm struggling with this. Um, I'm going to have to leave this here. Yeah. And then you've got another three wheels, and then you know, at least if you try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I would like to see that on your stream. You know, sometimes I'll tell you with the root mass, oh, this is really difficult. You know, and, and I, I think that people would like me to say that. Oh, I found that easy. That was a bit boring. That was that that was interest. Like today, very little to do, but yeah. I really liked it because it it solved one of my uh, issues, which is I didn't like that piece of plastic flapping. So I was really happy that today's bill came along. Yeah. Uh, and to be fair, to make it a bigger build, for how much metal we got for the price, could they have really put any more in? Oh, I think not. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good idea. I think, yeah, Dave Mills said that ideally, yeah, you need to do the parts as they as you get them so people know what they're yeah. expecting. So maybe give it a go, and then if you really find it difficult... Then just explain that you you're you're finding it difficult. It is a very hard piece. Yeah. Other people have obviously had problems with it, um, and and that you're going to have to set it aside till later when you you can get some help. I think that's yeah. good. But I mean, I think today is um, one of the few issues on the bus where we've we've kind of ignored the instructions a little bit and gone our own way. Um, so. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the guy who designed this or, or built it for the instruction manual thought that was really the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'm just a little bit different. Maybe I'm over worrying about the build. Maybe this floor is stronger than I think it is. Um, and I'm just keep treating it a little bit too, too carefully. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to. I want to see your thoughts on the builds when you build it. I want. I want to see what you think to it. Yeah. I want to see what you. Uh, I want to see what you you struggle with, um, because I'm I'm now behind you on the build. So yeah, because I'm, 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 in, I'm in the position Horlix is in with the bus, yeah. which is that he's seen it being built. But he hasn't done it himself yet. That's the position I want to put myself in with a jag. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Gordy, Gordy always gives us lovely compliments. And I, I promise you, we don't pay him. I mean, he says, You guys are a tonic, so funny, truly made my day so much better. So, have you had a bad day? Um, I've had a terrible day, but I can't talk about it because you've seen my badge on my shirt. Yeah. So, um, no, I've just had, I've had better days. Although I did have a funny moment. I'm kind of, um, some of my managers, I'm finding that I'm talking to them 
uh, not quite as well as I used to, but they understand. Like today, my man, one of my men just seemed in a bit of a strop, and he, he just went, Penny, I need you. Go and do a trip on that. And that was it. And I, after I'd done the trip, I went up to him. I said, have I done something wrong? And he went, no, why? I went, because you bloody talked to me like I did. And we just both laughed, which is exactly how that was meant to, to come across. Um, but you you guys, you most of you probably know, especially if in your supervisory position, um, you get so much work piled on you and you're like, ah. And then once it all calms down, you're all lovely again. Um, so James uh, Tubridy, sorry I'm late. Um, we should have a drinking game based on that, shouldn't we, James? Mm -hmm. Every time you're late, um, we have a drink and we'll get drunk every single week. <laughs> uh, I've just settled in on holiday. Fantastic. Are you, um, what do they call it now, a staycation? Or um, I, have you actually gone away? Um, Mark Knight, he's a full-time carer for the ex missus but I find I had more intelligent conversation with myself. Okay. Um, yeah, from last night's bill as well. That's what I done. I have a friend who's just sent me a video, but uh, I know from experience not to open them. Uh, and unless you know it's just you. Ben, that's what uh, Neil, I don't know. Neil Newman. Oh, are these, these are your boxes for your screws, are they? No, yeah, for the, this build as well. Now, yeah. They've got all the spares in there. Yeah. Let, let me just respond to this. Right, Neil Newman. Sorry, really need to know. Can you tell me, is it because YSC is not fitted that I can't hear? Um, it might well be... Um, I don't actually know what YSC does. If anybody knows, uh, YSC is. What did I ask? Hang on, Chris. Hang on, Chris. Sorry, um, say again, Horlix. Uh, yes, I think C is for the front lights. So right. the the front, yeah, the front lights and the fog light and the mod. If you've done it and connected it. Yeah. So I think maybe we need a, a session where we trace all the wires. So we figure out exactly. So if someone says, my horn doesn't work, I can then say, yeah, that's going to be circuit number D or, or whatever. Right. Um, so no lights or horn. Okay, um, I would suggest, yeah, no lights. If you haven't plugged C in, you won't get any lights until you get the extension cable. As for the horn, that could either be an issue with one of the, the switches probably unlikely because i think there's two or three buttons isn't there or um maybe the speaker uh, because i know the wires were quite fragile on the speaker um so maybe fitting the speaker box it's it's knocked one of the wires off the actual speaker so it might be worth taking the speaker back off and just checking chris the had, yeah chris had that didn't you chris yeah, yeah. you sold yeah. that back on for him yeah are they still broken, Chris? Because I know they broke again, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, this, I, I can't do it. I'm going to have to sort it out. Well, I need to bring my solder iron with me. Yeah. Which is a good job. I'm going to be hiring a car, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm doing a little bit of, um, let's call it a project for what's uh, sake of a better, better word. There's a young lad, lovely young lad. Um, he's, they did tell me what, what the issue is but i can't you know these medical things they have these funny names but basically he's about 10 years old and he has the the, the mental capacity at the moment oh, of a yeah. Year old. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he's um he seems to be struggling with um what is socially acceptable and he's got a very short attention span and i know he's had a little bit of problem where well, his mum's had a little bit of a problems so I've suggested maybe I take him out once a month um, and then we can just see if that helps. It gives him something to look forward to. So yeah. what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go out, just to, like maybe just go around the park or something the first time and then um, we'll build that up to maybe go around the museum or something or something that he'll enjoy. But then that causes a problem that I'm going to go and see Chris Davies on my long weekend. 
and if I leave too late, I can't get the train because Chris lives in one of these areas where they cut the bus service really easy, uh, really early. Yeah, well, seven o'clock is the last one. I so, think. Six. Yeah. And I've looked at hiring a car, and to be honest with you, it's not that much more expensive than getting the train. So, um, and you never know, people might surprise you as well, Chris. Yeah, you know what's happening. All right. Good idea for the game. I've gone to a different location for two weeks. Very bad Wi-Fi. Um, listen, um, some of you guys, if you like, I know Mark uh, Stuart Sullivan. I don't think it's Asperger's. I would have remembered if it was Asperger's. It's something I've not heard of. But um, they they classify and subclassify and sub subclassify things, don't they? Um, but basically, I know he's. Um, He's got, basically, when he sees me, he comes running up to me, shouting, hey, 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 and, and he gets a nice big hug off me. And then I get told off by his mum because she was talking to him and he's just seen me and gone, whoa, I'm gone. Um, so, and I don't realise that she was talking to him and I'm like, hello, oh, and I'm like, but if I know, you know. So we're going to see. He, we probably won't be able to, or I certainly won't be able to advance him in social um, behaviour because that's something that takes a lot of effort. But I think I know you, um, you've got a condition. Um, Don't get them more um, autistic, isn't it? Oh, Harvey's Vintage Audio. Um, it's me, Harvey, on my new channel. I stupidly rescreened an Amazon show on my other channel and got night and day ban on live streaming. Yeah, um, you've got to be careful what you play. Um, I've I've been lucky. Every time I've had anything that's been copyrighted, um, everything that I've used, they've put a claim on, and when it monetizes, the money for that video will go to the person that owns the copyright. You know, even if you don't see it. So I consider that one lucky because A, I'm not at the point where I monetize, and B, I'm not doing YouTube with the intention of making profit. So I really don't care if a couple of pence goes to someone else. Um, but I've seen some pretty horrific things that I've even seen like copyright claims from people that don't even have the copyright. Um, and YouTube seems to believe the copyright holder before they believe you. So you've got to be really, really stupid. Um, so, yeah, Harvey saying it was the show about is the real Paul McCartney dead? Okay, interesting theory, actually. Um, so Ian Martin's disappearing. He says, see you again next week, guys. Not yeah. Um, What's up, Mike? Is it? Thanks for popping on. So, ah, uh, oh, now you know me with my my um my lyrics. Mm -hmm. Harvey Harvey says, "Oh my God, I am so buggered until November," and the song "Gone Till November" just popped in my yeah. head. I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds like a dog moaning. Yeah, as it always does. Oh, it's your dog, Chris. I thought it was um. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny when? When you get an adult dog moaning like that, you're like, oh, God, the dog's gone again. <laughs> not like Horlick says, it's like, oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. <laughs> Mine doesn't make a noise. It's a perfect dog. Yeah. She's cute, doesn't make a noise. When she runs around and causes trouble, it's cute. <laughs> That's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. um, we're gonna be um possibly rescheduling yeah i i have seen your channel harvey and there's some nice i'm quite into old stuff i've not heard before or stuff that i've not heard for a long time um so i find your channel quite interesting um Mark says he has to be careful. The experts, <laughs> um, and I have to ask people to avoid flashing imagery. She doesn't get a warning. Oh. 
Armini. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, obviously we have Dave Say coming on at a regular interval and um, uh, Fleetwood J. Um, but of course, what's now happening is because they're because they're doing the show for me when they can when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. It then means that we get Dave for like two weeks running and then we don't see him for ages. Um, so I just want to try and maybe just move things around a bit um, so we get a fair splatter of guests rather than just get all in one lump. Uh, um, but, I was just thinking, obviously I know it's Rootmaster, but is it worth mentioning our new project just in case there's some viewers here that don't see Saturday? If you like, um, do you want to intro it or do you want me to? No, I'll let you. I'll let you. Uh, um, I was hoping you were going to say, I'll do it. <laughs> right. okay, so let me find the video. Oh, just in me... case, because I'm not just in case you know there's extra viewers here that might yeah. be interested that don't necessarily come along to the Saturday show because our current project might not be of interest to some people. Yeah, what. What we're basically um, trying to do is create our own, in effect, make our own part work. Um, so what we're doing is we're looking at 3D projects and then just breaking them down into nice bite-sized chunks and, and then building them. So we're doing the orrery at the moment, which is essentially to you and me, that's a planetarium. Um, and then once we finish that, we'll be working on a, on a radio control chapter. Now, taking the orrery, it's um, 60 quid to build, which seems, I think is a lot of money for a single project. Just checking this works. But by breaking it down into bite sized pieces, oh, there's the dog. Sorry, <laughs> got to see the dog. Ah, oh, hello, gorgeous. Max. Who's that? Max. Maxwell House. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so that's enough ooh, 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 ooh for me. So this is uh, it's a quick two minute video, and this should show you everything that we'll be doing. Um. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll it'll basically it'll be so everything you see on that screen we will be building, but we'll only build one tractor. Um, that, that's sorry, I apologise. That's actually not the video I want to show. Um, that's the wrong one. This is the one. I do apologise for that. So what we're going to do? It's going to take quite a while. Um, but we are going to build a radio control tractor with lots of accessories. That sounds cool. Ow, sorry. Pull. 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 Goodbye. You have to ignore the coming soon because he's already built it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, Stuart, if you can't make, make it live. But obviously, you know our videos will all sit there. Um, but one of the problems we're having is we're saving an awful lot of money by buying our electronics from Banggood. Um, I think we're saving about 60% on the costs. Um, we're, we're still updating uh, costs and things, but just for the tractor alone, um, if I can find it, we're estimating that the tractor electronics is going to come to around about £146. I've got a feeling it might be more with the... Uh, um, uh yeah with a transmitter but it's going to be it's going to be round about um 100 let's, let's for sake of arguments call it 200 quid um 
so obviously like if we said um right let's let's go out and buy 200 quids worth of parts then everyone's going to go oh no no no, i can't do that so what we're going to do is we're going to break it down so it's about 10 15 pounds a week and have i come gone completely off track there horlicks no i'm just thinking i think it was the wrong video shown because this, right. is, this is the newer one okay let's have a look at horlicks's then Ah oh, yes, yes, yeah, the 2019 one we're doing. The one you saw was the older that's version. The one. Yeah. Yeah, that's so it. Yeah. What we've got there is we've got the dump there. Obviously, we've got the tractor. We've got the dumper trailer, which he will dump stuff in a minute. In the background on the left, you can see a different kind of trailer, and that's the one you saw in an earlier video that had another tractor on it. What's that yellow thing I've done? Oh, that's the leveler, isn't it? But we're um, we're we're having to really study it, like what parts do what and what color to do them. See, I really like this. So ba what our basic game is, is for people to figure out how, but I think there's a lot of people out there that haven't got things like 3D project, uh, 3D print printers because they think it's too expensive. I can't afford one myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I'm using a 150 pound printer, which is... You know, if you haven't got 150 pounds, then it might as well be a thousand, but it's not hugely expensive, is it? But that's that's possibly one of my favorite bits. That or the trail. And we've got we've got some other other projects lined up afterwards as well. But I'm wondering if you know this is something that we can we can meet up, have have a big meet, and bring our traps mm -hmm. down and mm -hmm. and do stuff with them, or I'm maybe we can do something else. I'm uh, just uh, sure. We're just going to pause this a sec. Yeah. Even this jockey wheel here, that works as well. So you can actually twist that, and it will go down, and you can prop your trailer up with it. Yeah. Like a caravan, um, yeah. We are still planning it, um, and there's still a lot of planning to do. But one thing that I'm finding interesting is that okay. there's, there's a few bits where either myself and Horlicks are going, oh, can we modify that? Yeah. And we've got definitely one modification coming up. Yeah. And possibly a second one. So, and that's only two or three parts we've looked at. So, um, yeah, um, we're both really looking forward to this. And it's so beautifully made. Um, yeah. I've, awesome. I've, I've the whole thing from the design awesome. to the way it goes together and everything. You know, we haven't done anything major with it. But, you know, it just so happens that coincidentally two parts that go together have been on the desk at the same time and we've had a quick stick up and it's like wow yeah and it's so easy to build they're really well thought of the one of like one of our biggest problems those panels they look like bits of wood to me um so we're kind of looking at that and going well can we redesign that piece so we can print it off on a 3d printer maybe get ourselves a wood filament or something and print it off um so it's uh yeah you could feed your budgie with the trailer yeah, right. hey, so even ahead. just building it we're we're able to just yeah. like this bus the bus is being built to a basic spec and those 
those that just want to build it, they, they'll be happy with it. But other people might go, right, well, I want to take this a step further. And, and that's what we're going to aim, aim at doing. And you don't know, you guys might be watching it and going, oh, well, you, you know, could you do this with it? And we're like, oh, never thought of that. So we might get an extra three or four weeks out of, out of the, um, the project. So, um, yeah, we really want to try. I mean, the thing is, if I can get one or two people buying a 3D printer and actually building projects, that to be success. It's got to be a success, isn't it? One person. I wouldn't mind doing that myself if I had a chance. Yeah. I think the interest has been quite good on that, but yeah. at the very least, we'll have we'll have a, a live Saturday show, and we'll have a good old laugh on the show. Some people just come on just to have a laugh. Obviously, we don't get the viewers that we get on the Route Master show, but you know, it's um, that's the way it goes. But yeah, we've worked hard on this Route Master show, and we've not been working on yeah. the three print show as long as we've been working on the Route Master show. So. Who knows? Maybe in a couple of years' time, we'll have about a thousand viewers all building it with us. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the problem I've got is, well, the orrery was the best thing we could come up with with our skill levels, and we're now looking at something that's that that knocks that for six. Six. And that's probably the best thing we can come up with. And then we'll we're like, well, what are we going to build after this? And then we we found something that could be better, and then yeah. we're like, well, well, where can we go from this? And uh, we're just worried that we're going to end up doing a build, and you're all going to go, well, that's a bit naff. But we, there always seems to be things coming out, and um, and we're trying to pick different different subject matters. So mm. you know, like for example, I I might like to do another radio control car. But I don't think it'd be a good idea to do it straight after the tractor because it's just the same theme all the time. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get you guys interacting with us a bit more. We know we have the subject lined up for the project after the tractor, but obviously we could be looking at stuff to do after that. Um, Peter Whitlock's into four to one to fourteen scale RC trucks. One or more tractors would make a suitable load. <laughs> um, I think this is one to ten scale. Um, I know. I think it was Dave Say asked, and the reason I think it's one to ten scale. Um, it's going to take a while, but I'm loading up Cura. Um, one of the parts, I think it's the trailer. It actually comes with a pallet, and I think it's the title of the file is something along the lines of one to ten scale euro pallet. So I'm going to assume that it's. It looks like it's the scale. You've got little little uh, forklift truck um, uh, attachment, so you can go around and lift pallets up, hmm. and um, it's all got to be to scale. So. And I don't know if this is scalable because, you know, you can scale the 3D parts, but you can't scale the motors or the servos. So um, I don't know. Okay. Oh, do you know what? I've just realized, sorry, Harvey, yeah. Harvey is Harvey De Niro, who is our current hero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it's... Um, ah, it is an open source. It is 1 to 10 scale. Right. It's an open source 1 to 10 scale replica. And original. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because... Oh, that's interesting because we get the front badge for the trailer and it says Ebro on it. It's not something I'd heard of. I guess that's more people like Dave Say's domain. Um, but Fleetwood J has said it's a 160D trailer. We get two different badges for it, don't we? Yeah. One right. of them is a 160D. So I think I've now decided which badge I'm going to stick on my hood. Yeah. And they're the ones that I chose as well. Is it? The other one was 165 or something right. like that. I mean, I, I don't know anything about this tractor, but no. 
I'm assuming a 165 is a slightly later model than a 160D. Uh, a 160D maybe being a 160 with a few modifications. I don't know. So, but I'm going to write that down because now I've got a starting point for, for research. Um, Ebro 160D tractor. So I can now Google that. And I can see where that takes me. And because um, it would be nice to have some intelligent comments that I can make about the tractor. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to know why you picked that particular tractor. Because if I was going to go out and build a tractor, I would probably go for something like uh, a John Deere. Because that, to me, is the famous tractor. But then I'm not in tractor circles. So... Um, yeah, poor old Harvey, not streaming till no November. I'll be gone till November. <laughs> uh, that's a copyright strike for me now, isn't it? Um, yeah, so, in all last night, pardon, in all last night on my stream, right? Yeah, right. If I show you this and come, you probably can see this part there in the middle, yeah. The sticker fell off, so I phone model the space this afternoon. They sent me they could have sent me any wish you. Okay. Yeah, which is fine. If I asked them to leave me to send the parts back, I said no. Keep them. That's fine enough, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Harvey's asking about does anyone remember frog kits? No. What I don't remember them. Oh, also Peter Willock saying about a grey little Ferguson. Yeah, I I know Ferguson tractors. Yeah, so maybe mm. I'm not so stupid. Maybe I'm not so tractor stupid as I thought. Um, ah, there you go. This is a. Um, I've just seen a. I've just got a picture of one. Ah, wow, that? that's pretty accurate, then, isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking that. Is that is that an actual tractor? Yeah, that is the real one. You gonna drive it in Wallace? I've just googled. Wow. Um, <laughs> there's a few. Um, there's another one. Wow. So I'm guessing this is a European tractor, is it? Um, must be, yeah, I'm not really sure. Another one. Wow, well, look, we've got, we've got, um, tractor anoraks all over the place now. <laughs> Peter Whitlock said it looks for, for similar to a Fordson. Ah, I mean, there's one with well, a... That's got a, ca that's got a cabin on it. Yeah. <laughs> and there looks like a, a supporting rod that goes down the front here. Ah, okay. So that would be for supporting things, would it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that one's got a winch on the front. Okay. So maybe if we can make this model very popular, yeah. then uh, we the the author may design more attachments for it. Yeah. Cool as well, after doesn't it? Winch would be great. Yeah, yeah, we, could, like, pull, we could pull we things along our desks. We could pull things across the desk with it, <laughs> yeah. or have have tug of wars and <laughs> see whose motor's stronger than the other. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, yeah, just just sort of bring it up because obviously, um, yeah. Um, I mean, so the biggest problem we're having really is the parts. Um, although I think we've done quite well with the. I'm just look. I got some. I got my first parts today. I yeah. ordered them on the fourth of August, mm -hmm. and it's the fourteenth today. So let me pick one part at random. Right. So it's saying. Oh, ship and time four to nine business days. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just pick. 
I'm just picking a couple of parts at random. I'm just seeing what to, what the postage is. Some of these they're quoting like twenty days. Yeah, so I think all the parts that I've received today have been from the UK. Right. Okay. Oh, I see. I didn't take any notice of where I. Sh I never thought to look at that. Ah. But I mean, I'm. I have been a bit naughty. Um, whilst you were building the route master, I was playing with one of my parts, um, which was the diff. Okay. Uh, yeah, it needs adjustment, but obviously we'll go through that in the thing. It took me about fifteen minutes to get it to to work. Right. Okay. So our first show is going to be a little bit more involved than we yeah, thought. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Because um, for me personally, um, ah, right, so this, um, right, so I've picked a few parts at random that, I, that I've received today, and most of them were like one to two business days. Um, but then I noticed that the motor is, um, the motor in the diff is seven to 20 business days which is obviously four weeks. Um, so I guess what they've done is they've lumped them all together, waited for all of the parts to come in, and then sent them all out. So they probably had things like the wires and, and that all sat in a box ready. And then once the motor came, bang, off they all go. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, uh, it's, it's come in 10 days. So we'll call that two weeks. Uh, we're allowing four weeks. So what we're what we're actually going to be doing is um, screws. Right, the screws I found that they're actually cheaper from eBay than they are from um, uh, Banggood, which is a bit unusual. Um, the company that I personally use, um, I think they have found cheaper, and I have bought from cheaper. Um, but let me let me give you an uh, 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 right. I'll tell you how good they are. For the very first order I ever made, I I bought some uh, threaded rod loader screws. It says free postage, one to two days or two to three days or something like that. Now, when when it says on eBay free postage, you've got to expect second class. You know, if if they give it to you for free, they're not going to go out and buy like. Yeah, DPD the next day. Um, now, the first order I got it actually came with DPD, so I'm assuming now. Obviously, like if whatever, if it's say free posted, you know that they they put the price of the product up to cover the posting. So if you've got like I don't know, let's say every item has a pound added to it to cover the postage. If you buy ten items, they've got ten quid towards postage. So then they might use a courier and my first order did come with dpd and i was very happy it came the next day um but where i'm ordering like two maybe three packs of screws they're going in a padded envelope second class um uh, stamp stick it in the post it's, it's there in a couple of days um so i i mean it's a little bit unwise to order something with free postage that you want today you know it's not going to happen so i tend to order my screws a week before i need them um with the electronics so yeah so the screws will probably tell you we'll probably tell you about them in advance but because the screws per screw they're cheaper to buy packs of 50 or 100 so what we'll be doing is when you need for example an m3 10 mil bolt we will tell you to buy 50 or 100 or, or whatever. Then the next time you need that size screw, you don't need to buy it because you've already got it. We'll probably go through how many screws you need for the entire build. There's 15 different screws, roughly. Yeah, about that. So we'll probably go through, them. Well, you need three of them, you need 57 of them, 10 of them, blah, blah, whatever. The electronics, we will tell you four weeks in advance. So when we're doing the first build, we'll say, right, for stage five, you will need to order these. 
and then that way you can order them and receive them in time and then 3d printed parts we will order we, we will tell you about them one week in advance um, and we're kind of we're trying to come up with things that makes it easy um, so what we're doing with 3d prints is in most cases we will be printing a single color for the week you may be printing parts off that you may not need for many many weeks um but you know if you if you're printing some black bits off for the tractor and there's one black print you need say for the fertilizer you may as well chuck it in there then you've got the print done and dusted it's about two three extra you stick it in a box and say for later we will go up to what did we say five five print beds in a week one big print maximum um so there may be for example i think one one episode we're gonna have two very big prints but one of those very big prints you can actually break down into smaller um, let me give you an example i print it as a test all of these parts and they were all printed on one print bed and that was about a 12 hour print if you're not comfortable doing a 12 hour print you might perhaps want to print those one day so you go off to work you come home put your dinner on start the print and two hours later you've got those then the next day you've got those bits there the next day you've got those so we will never give you more than five prints um, because you you know we can't say right do 10 12 hour prints and have them done by next week because obviously it's not the logistics isn't going to work out um but once we get going there will um yeah, Bobby says he can still you see the fume uh, smell of fumes used to make it now um generally there will be one color print no, there, there's there's times when we need to do more, but that's mainly to do with things like the trailer. Um, but what we're going to do, right, so the budget, we're, we're going to say it'll be £15 a week, um, and that will be the average. So we want to average no more than £15 a week. We will never go more than £20 in a single week, and we are actually quite close to that on some weeks um so having a quick look at the instructions week one will cost 17 pounds uh week two will cost 1867 um weeks weeks one two and three will go over the 15 pounds but then by the time you get to i mean like week six actually costs zero to build um apart from the 3d prints no it will cost zero um because you've got you've bought all the parts beforehand um it uses bearings that we've used in previous stages nuts that we've already printed uh, or um parts that we've printed off in previous weeks because you know if you've if, for example, you print one wheel, you might as well print the other wheel. That, that's the kind of the basis we're going on. Um, so what we're looking at doing for that particular stage is chuck it in maybe a fiver's worth of 3D prints. So instead of spending loads of money one week and nothing the next, we'll spend a little bit. So, you so by the time we get to like the last four or five weeks, we won't be spending anything. Um, and we keep revising the estimated cost um i'm just trying to find my prayer my schedule right we're actually estimating that the whole build will work out at nine pound 82 pence a week average but that's that could be way out so have i waffled on too much there horlicks no that's all right yes yeah. but yeah that's um what's that so that's coming up yeah really i'm really buzzing yeah. about that build um and yeah as we said before what we've seen of it we haven't built it yet but 
we've played with a couple of parts that have accidentally landed together on the table. Um, and by the looks of it, it's going yeah, to be a really it's, good build. It's accidentally landed together on my table this morning. Uh. Um, it's it's actually a failed print, but I I mean this this level I've got a warp on the bed, and this is all the wrong colours, but this bit there. Um, I haven't put the tyres on, but this is going to attach to the back of the tractor. This is actually the leveller. So there's flexible bits to come down on the sides here, which is why you see the wheel sticking out. But that will go on the tractor. So, you know, when, when you had the, the big pile of seeds and you went over it and it all came out level, that's, that's this bit, which accidentally flandered together as I put them on the table. So I yeah, Penny's like done more than me because I haven't actually put anything together yet. I've just matched things up, not yeah, screwed things up. No, these are only finger tight. But the reason I screwed this together was because um, on the spreadsheet he's made a mistake, and it says you need like four refs, which is a screw, and I've trying to figure out what the screw is um and it's actually these two down the bottom and it's a screw there's some good news for you Horlix. it's a screw that we haven't bought oh. so yeah we've got a 12 mil screw we've got a 16 mil screw the 12 was too short and the 16 is too long so um i'll i'll probably buy i haven't actually got any um 14 mil screws other than the button head, uh, the, the counter sunk, and I don't think the counter sunk will work. Um, so, hang on. The thing is, with the counter sunk, it's going to try and put through the hole. I've so, got some odds and odds and stuff in here, so yeah, it's just right, something will work out. But this obviously, there's the flexible bit to come, but this was. Let's call it 12 hours on the print bed, maybe 20 hours, five minutes to assemble. So what we would do is the week before, we would say, these are the parts you need to print off. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight pieces there. And then there will be three pieces of flexible. Um, so, yeah, you could do that. Uh, Peter Whitlock could use a Dremel. Um, for the sake of one ninety nine, I personally would buy them. But um, but we've been sending each other care packages anyway. Um, we've got the advantage, obviously, because we're working together. Um, it's like, for example, the um, the, the JST, JST cables. We're going to need like four of them and they, they come in packs of 10. So we're buying them and then sending half of them to the other person. And um, well, that was the plan for those particular parts, but we've actually ordered, but it's not a bad thing, I don't think, because yeah. um, you know, you've got spares to adapt and things. Um, yeah. I've got this, some great here, but they, they... No. So we've got some transparent red filament. Oh, you got it? Yeah. I've got these um, absolutely wonderful. I don't think I could, even if I did show you, I don't think I could do it any justice. But there's two clear and two red. They look, uh, they're they light lenses. And a little packet of grease for the differential. And I think you will need that because I've, yeah, uh, yeah I've had to use some. But um, yeah, the differential I'm really looking forward to because, and I tell you what, I have found it's for a different project, but I have found um, how to 3D print your own differential. It's not something I would do for this project, but there is a, I think there's a radio controlled open source uh, Formula One car, and um, some guy has actually designed differential gears on on the back on the back wheel so um, i'm gonna open this i'm gonna um we have talked about differential on this show once before yeah. um, and basically the way that differential works is that if you look at the path when you go around the corner if you look at the path your wheels take your um 
your outside wheel will always travel a greater distance than the inside wheel. Um, and the science behind it is, is that if they're both rotating at the same speed, the out, basically the outside wheel is supposed to cover a greater distance over the same period of time. So it has to travel faster. Um, what a differential gear does is nothing in the case of mine. Is it stuck? It is stuck. And yeah, I'm going to yeah. leave it stuck until we yeah. do the build. Yeah, that's fine. Basically, what will happen is if one wheel is rotating faster than the other, what would happen in real life without a diff is that the back wheel would uh, would scrape and skid. This, What this will do is it will actually slip the inside wheel so that the inside wheel is actually moving slower. So it will kind of go slip, go slip, go slip, whereas the outside wheel is, is continually moving. And then if you go in the other direction, then the other side... And when this is working, what you'll be able to do is hold one wheel and then the other wheel will still be rotating. Or you can hold them both. I think you'll be able to hold them both. Um, uh, so, right, Peter Whitlock is bursting for the loo. Um, Stuart Sullivan, Penny, you got to come down and sort this bus out for me. Um, yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah. Now, my, I, I will be honest with you. I think they screwed that in tight on purpose so that the parts don't fall out. Um, and it's very dry. It feels very dry. So, I think I am going to need. Those three nuts, Horlix, are they locking nuts or do they just need to be loosened? No, I, as I say, I've been naughty and played with mine. They're just normal yeah. screws. I took all of mine out because I wanted to <laughs> see. It is full of grease. It's got some red grease in it. Okay. But it's really odd because when you've taken it off, I've actually pack i mean i shouldn't have really done it until we were on stream but you you haven't done yours so we'll be able to see what's what but i've packed it full of more grease and then i've right. really put the screws in but if you put one screw in slightly more than the other it goes fun it's slanted so right. you have to get it all right but i've left mine fairly loose and i've got really nice action now right. um, so yeah it, it'll be it would just be a case of play with it for 10 15 minutes until you're happy right and then what this bit obviously i'm guessing is is so that you can have you can't put the, oh yeah <laughs> you can't have the motor along there because there won't be anywhere to put it so this just means that you can have the motor there and obviously the motor is going to go that way but you don't want your wheel spinning that way because otherwise you'll move sideways. So this just obviously turns that action into that action by, and you probably can see that rotating. And that's basically how it's gonna work. So it's yeah. a, this is a piece of equipment I've never used before. No, um, I some, yeah, something else that I've never used before is um, transmitters. So it looks all nice and simple. Um, and yeah, I have. Well, I've mm -hmm. I used to have um, three petrol RC cars. Right. Um, and yeah, that. Do obviously... you know how they actually work, or did they come built? Yeah, well, yeah, they they come built, but you have to tune them up, and that yeah. is really. I mean, I used to go every Sunday. There was like-minded people. We all used to meet at a car a shopping centre car park on a Sunday at four o'clock when they all yeah. shut. And um, we spent. We were there for three, four hours. We probably spent three and a half tinkering, getting the yeah. getting the things to run, 
and about 20 minutes half hour of actually racing uh, because you get your car started you get it going but then someone else's car won't start and then then and they, the company they helping each other yeah and then theirs gets going and then yours won't start and yeah it goes on like that but it's good fun but it is yeah. very frustrating what's um let me tell you why i'm well why i'm excited a about saturdays but also why i'm excited about the uh the tractor yeah this <laughs> this is my current tractor that's why i'm excited that's that's the tractor yeah before we've begun and then what you've seen on the video is fingers crossed what it should look like so that's that's why i'm excited if you if you go out and buy radio control cars no no disrespect to how people do it but you've got to buy parts off the shelf so you'll buy a chassis and you're not making that you just go and i want that chassis hitting the money um obviously things like motors there's nothing i can do about motors i've got to buy motors um but i'm making the wheels i'm making the tires um I'm making everything or am either making or putting them together so yeah the only thing we're not really making is the differential and the motor that that's basically <laughs> it but i'm going to be looking at the open rc project and i'm going to be well there's the differential for it and it basically it's a disc a cog five tiny cogs inside and then another something or another and then that goes over the wheel so you know maybe by the end of the project we could actually design our own differential you you can you can all those pits bits off and ptg put them in and pack loads of grease in mm. don't know how we'd make a mower but you never mm. know in 10 years we'll be like Right, and on next week's build, the uh, 3D printed project, we will make the motor <laughs> and then we will assemble it. <laughs> right, guys, so do you have anything to add to the show? It's now coming up for half past 10. Oh, there's one thing I never done before, though. I think that's it from me. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm all like saying about the um, petrol RC cars? Yeah. I never had one of them before. You never did. No. They are yeah. good. They when they work, they're really good fun. They do about thirty. Yeah, long, the you can keep up keep up with the car with one. <laughs> but, yeah, because scale wise, they're very very fast, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but they're very. They are a bit too fast because you just can't control the thing. You, you floor it and it's off, and your your back end spinning round and, and uh. the everywhere from the exhaust <laughs> yeah so getting a getting a button some of these motors that we're getting we can buy different speeds yeah and um well yeah so the, the petrol the cars, you get different engines yeah i mean the temptation for this tractor i did actually find myself going yeah i'll buy that faster mower but i know that faster mowers have their own problems and this is a tractor it's not designed to go 200 mile an hour with a pallet mm. of bird seed on the back <laughs> or, or, yeah. Yeah. Let, let's let's take this bag of potatoes at 200 miles an hour <laughs> if anything, we should have bought the slower one yeah so is that even faster one for um so i know someone was doing a boat project and he put a better motor in the boat and it melted the the boat because faster moat will naturally generate more more heat mm. yeah, it doesn't like heat so you've got to then look at start maybe designing bits in ptg um so new new bits bring new problems but we'll certainly be looking at modifying this and not not to be offensive to the designer um you know obviously we're looking at ways we can improve it so um yeah so, so, yes have you used a drone or pardon 
Have you used a, used a drone? No, no. I haven't either. <laughs> no. Uh, well, that, that's something we, we could always look at in the future. If people, if people want to buy, you know, make a drone, um, apparently they're really easy to make. Yeah, I've seen one actually on Facebook. Yeah. And um, <laughs> one of the things that you say quite a lot, Horlicks, is if we do anything radio controlled, we probably already have the receiver from the from the tractor. I, yeah. I guess there's like little boards or something you put in the receiver or, or yeah, so for next time. You put them in a the tractor. Yeah, all you do is buy the receiver, which is just a little box. And that, well, depending on the one we're going to get, though, Penny, because they're all different, some of them are sealed and programmed and done. But right. most of them, the actual little receiver box, um, you can buy them separately, and then you can buy what's called crystal. Well, most of you probably know. I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but <laughs> um, they've got crystals in them, which are like little... They look like fuses, basically, and you push yeah. them in, and they've got different frequencies. So then you'd buy them and change them, um, and then, you know, you can operate things. But you can use the same crystal because you're not going to be flying a drone and a tractor at the same time. <laughs> so are you saying that, obviously, we're going to go with the receiver that they recommend for this project? So yeah, it comes with the controller and receiver, but you can buy the receivers separately. So are you then suggesting that if we did, for example, a drone, yeah, we look at using a good receiver that we can then definitely yes. use for other projects? Yeah. So when we then do the third uh, project that involves a receiver, we don't need to buy that because we've already – we may need to buy little bits, but yeah. we want to buy the whole receiver. Yeah, because you've got the controller – and you've got the receiver. The receiver is the little box that all the servos plug into. So yeah. as long as we can um, get the the same crystals, we're looking to it. Uh, you can change them. All right. we need to do for the next, say, for example, we made a remote control boat. Yeah. All you would have to do is buy the little receiver, which will cost hardly anything. But then you can use the controller we've already got. Right. And I'm going to ask the most stupid question in the world, but this is more for confirmation. Obviously, the more channels that it has, the more you can control. Yeah. If, you've got a, if you've got two channel receiver, all you'll do is forwards, backwards, left and right. Yeah. Right. This channel, this one we're doing is a six six channel. Now, let's say for argument's sake, I buy. I oh, know, yeah, right? Okay, we buy. A, um, I don't know if this exists, but um, a sixteen-channel receiver. We can still use that on a project that all we want to do is go forwards, backwards, left, and right. Yes. It's just that we'll have fourteen channels not used. Yeah. So basically, if you were to buy, if we were to keep the controller we've got, which is a six-channel, right? And then you bought a separate sixteen-channel receiver. Yeah. Obviously the only channels one to six would work on the 16 channel receiver the others would be redundant right so if i went out and bought the receiver that i'm on the transmit well it the little box that i'm looking at getting for the r2d2 which is really flashy and does everything but it's about 400 quid from banggood that can then be used for any project I do that requires a receiver. Yeah, I guess so. As long as, you, as long as the receiver's got the right frequency. It's just that for the majority of the projects, it will be overkill. Yeah. You know, so, so for example, a mod that we could have in the future, if you got a receiver that had an LED screen in it, we could then mount a camera on the tractor and then we can see exactly what the tractor is seeing. So perhaps another mo uh, another project we can do in the future is to do some kind of radio-controlled robot that we could sit in our bedrooms and then we could guide them into our sister's bedrooms to see what they're up to. <laughs> you know, or watch what you... No, no. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, you could use it as a spy bot, couldn't you? Yeah. So, or a drone. Well, obviously, the drone that would be useful because we can see what the drone can see yeah. as well as having it record footage. Yeah. So, this is, I, mean, I remember I started off doing electronics and we were doing Arduino projects. And well, was, uh, the aim was to go from one lesson to the next. Mm. This one is quite interesting for me because every time we were doing the lesson, we were looking at ways. I was thinking of examples when we would use that in real life. So, so, for example, lesson one is lighting an LED. And to be absolutely honest with you, the only use I could find for an LED at that particular time was as an indicator. So my TV, it has a blue, it's got a blue light when it comes on and a red light when it goes off. So at night, when I switch the TV on, I'll press the button, nothing will happen on the screen, but the little light will go blue. And then after about two seconds, the screen will come on. It kind of warms up. So I'm not sitting there pressing the power button 15 times because I can't see anything happening. So that light goes blue. So that's a good use of an LED. And then when I switch it off, it goes red. So I know it's gone off. And then if I've got a problem, if the TV's not working, the first thing I'm going to do is look at that LED. If there's no lights at all, then I can now suspect there's no power coming. So using the LED, it's, it's an indicator. It doesn't necessarily do anything um, practical other than tell you it's working. Mm. And then you've got other things. Something meter. You can turn it up and down. Potential. But yeah. And that's for, well, that's basically what the, throttle is going to be on on the receiver uh, transmitter isn't it yeah it's pull it a little bit it's just like turning the dial up a little bit pull it back hard it's like turning it up full so what we get what we're doing is we're going to learn about bits as they become useful for us you know connecting well we're not we're not going to put a camera in but if we put a camera in we will learn how the cameras work um so yeah and then we can do different applications right guys so i have waffled on way too much as i do every single week um so unless someone's got something else to come that to come up with um harvey's asking if anyone collects the fortnightly star trek models i've almost three quarters of the collection and gave up i've heard that said a lot it just goes on and on didn't World of Wang give up the helmets collection because they just kept adding to it? Yeah, I think in the end he just got the ones that he really that meant something to him that he wanted. Um, Harvey's also asking about, so I missed this earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some Triag Hornby engines and rolling stock, some in original boxes. What do you think they're worth? got to be totally honest with you as far as i'm concerned you're asking the wrong person um i've seen uh the train sets aren't cheap and i know really good uh you buy engines separately and they're not cheap uh, wow. so i uh, my non-expert opinion is they're going to be worth quite a bit but wow. I, I don't know how much what how much money you'd have made on them if you sell them, um, if anything. I, mean, I think it depends on if they're boxed as well, stuff like yeah. that, the condition of the boxes. But, yeah, I think probably a lot um, but based on, you know, modern stuff that's out now. I mean, modern railways is such an expen expensive hobby. I'd love to do it, yeah. but I haven't got the space or the money. But... I, know I think it's becoming happens. more than now for people that want to do like the the, the scenery and stuff. Yeah, you, know, you could spend days doing the rail track, yeah. and then you know doing the oil spills and the, the 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 stone and the trees, and you do a nice little running waterfall by the side of it. And for me, that's that was that's what be quite exciting. But, yeah, uh, but um. 
would you guys be interested in building a train set at some point in the future? I guess I'd go. I would. I would love to do it. I'd love to do one uh, in the well, somewhere in a room, and I would also love, love, love to do a garden railway. Oh uh, yeah. There was a, a series on telly a few years ago called Garden Railway, and he goes through a basic level the ingredients you need to start off this little garden railway, and it's amazing. And some of the stuff you can do, yeah, it's lovely. I keep joking with my well, someone at work. I think I've told you before, Lorraine at work, she's got a garden. I said it's perfect for a garden railway, and I keep saying, Can I come round and do a garden railway? <laughs> she keeps laughing saying no well i've um there is a huge um uh, open open railway project um i first came across it by finding stevenson's rocket which i'd really like to build um but they don't just have stevenson's rocket they have all sorts of you know the big american freight trains that they mm. have and the old amtrak type things they have those and um yeah maybe we we could build those um, but yeah these are all things uh, i want to gauge what people are actually interested in are they interested in just the build don't really care what they're building they just want to build something or or are people into something specific um if we've left somebody out you know, there might be someone who doesn't really care about planets. Maybe they're just watching the show because they enjoy the show. They don't care about planets. And then they watch from this and go, and, oh, bloody hell, tractors. What the hell? There's nothing interesting about that. So then maybe the third or fourth build, you know, I'd like to try and find out what they like so that we can do something that would interest them. I mean, know, to it, for me, yeah, it is just a tractor. So, oh. But yeah, it is. For me, it's the whole build, the, yeah. the the look of it, and all the electronics and, and steps that go with it just look quite yeah. exciting. Yeah, I mean, I I've always said for me, I mean, I I I give a lot of stuff away. I I make stuff and I give it to someone, and they get joy in receiving and using it. Um, I mean, most of you won't know this, but ages and ages and ages ago. I printed the uh, Royal, I painted the Royal Guard from Star Trek, uh, Star Wars. Then got myself in trouble there. That must have been well over a year ago. And I gave one to my manager at work, and it's it still sits pride of place on her computer. And if anyone touches it, she goes absolutely ballistic. Um, the group I printed her, she's really upset that I broke the arm off. And um, I made her a little butterfly box. You have to move certain panels and then the sp the, a spring comes out with a key in it. Then you got to move more panels to discover where the hell the kit, the lock is. And then you put the key in and open it. And Did you finish it, that? Though? Pardon? Did you finish that? Oh, that's ages ago I'd done that. I saw you were half through it, but I never saw yeah. the completed thing. Well, I've got, I got two more orders for one now. So... Um, so right night john wicks uh, michael john wicks you take care night um take care, yeah. see you next week I did that and, and the guys most people can figure out how to get a key out but they um they can't get any further and i think someone's tried to shake it and they've actually broken the hinge it's actually snapped so and we i know i said oh i said snapped oh she went mental Oh, I, I wish people would bloody leave things alone. It's not theirs, it's mine. And, um, you know, and, and and it's great because I got the joy out of making it. She's got the joy out of, out of owning it. That's a fair deal as far as I'm concerned. Now, with this tractor, we are spending hours planning it. So it's a nice, I don't, I don't want to get to the point where, You've got so much to do one week, you can't fit it into your, into the show. And then the following week, you go, this piece, screw it in, screw it in, end of show. That, that's what I'm trying to avoid. So 
and and I'm having I am actually really really enjoying planning this. Um, you guys can't see the plan, but it will just appear on the show, and then hopefully you'll go. That was a nice nice episode, and the next week you'll go. Oh, that was nice, and and we. I, I just haven't got enough time to do it. I cram half an hour in here and an hour there, and you know. And how many times have we been on uh, on on Streamyard together chatting? Well, I'm gonna have to put it at eight o'clock. Yeah. Well, right, I've got to go to bed. It's up past ten. Mm. And we're loving it, aren't we? Yeah. So our enjoyment and we'll have finished most of our well most of my enjoyment will be finished before it even goes to stream then i will turn to building it um we're trying to avoid building any of it we've done a we've done a dry run on stage one and we're going um we've got you might see boxes in the background they're all labeled up and we're sitting there and we're putting bits of parts in and then we're going uh right haven't got the moat, so we're writing bits of paper and pretending that's the part and putting it in. And um, yeah, so we will, hopefully we will build everything for the first time live on the stream um, when it comes around to it. So yeah, we're getting really excited about this, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and I say this, um, oh, I said I'm trying to avoid building it, but this one I had to because I couldn't, trying to figure the part there's no instructions for it so and this yeah one, that's the thing we've got we've got some basic basic instruction on the actual the tractor but when it comes to other bits we're having to work that out and i think it's yeah. going to get a lot harder for some of it yeah but we'll get there yes I we, can do this off, the we, we, we can do anything yeah I've had this bit on the other way round. I've had the wheel sticking up in the air. I've had this bit on the, on the other side. Um, I built it at one point, and I noticed all the flexible bits were pointing up in the air. And I'm like, oh, that's wrong. That's all got to come apart. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got to leave for work in 10 minutes. No, I'll just finish it. Um, so, but yeah, that'll be, I think that's not quite as exciting as I thought it was going to be because uh, it's about a five minute build but you know that's if that's what it is that's what it is right guys so i'm gonna go now because i am up at four o'clock um but i'm always up at four o'clock now um i've got room cleaning to do and i cannot miss my taxi at seven because the big evil man will come on my door and go well i still want my money um so i've got to make the most of that and this time next week i will have a tidier room <laughs> so that reminds you i need i need to contact someone actually i've um i've got a man will come but i asked i asked my landlord landlady if they can uh send uh one of their guys around just to lift the fridge up and uh they said yeah yeah, yeah contact us close to the time so I contacted them yesterday and they seem to have disappeared off the face of the earth. But I've got a neighbour that will do it for four cans of beer, so I can live with that. So, right, okay, so I'm going to let the other two guys say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much for making this a wonderful stream, guys. Yeah, awesome. It's never, you know, you guys make the stream. Um, you know, we could sit here waffling to nobody yeah. and it wouldn't be 10% uh, of the stream. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Next week we're doing what do we think we're doing? Front and the back of the upper deck. Yeah, the front and back walls, yeah. So I'm happy with this week's build. Um, I've been wanting to get that bit of framework on for a long time, so I'm happy. So I will see you all next week, guys. Yeah, see you later, guys. So see you later. I don't see you too yeah. as well. Lovely. Right, okay, guys. Yeah, I'll probably see you on Friday. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And then Saturday, we're doing more of the Ori. So take care, guys. Bye bye. Yeah.